teaching world religions, which is my bread and butter course in college, has been just fabulous in terms of learning more about the worldview I was raised with, which was very much um, dualistic, you know, very much dividing reality into, you can just name the pairs, all the way from salt and pepper to dark and light to bad and good to, you know, show, you show beginning religion students a yin yang and say, true or false, this is a picture of the battle between good and evil, and they'll put true every time. You want to say, no, this is about the balance of dark and light. But, but I, um, I get really weary of that, really weary of the binaries, which ask me always to decide which side something is on. That seems not helpful to me at all. And what I've learned, especially from some of the Chinese traditions, is a lot of our pronouncements of good and evil have to do sort of with where we freeze the frame. I mean, I win the lottery and that's good. But then tomorrow the IRS shows up and that's bad. You know, and the day after that I'm able to give to a worthwhile cause and that's good. And the day after that a cousin I never knew I had, you know, wants money for a kidney operation. Or, and that's, it's just like, where do you freeze the frame to call it good or bad? So there's a sense in which, I mean, life is a constant unfolding in which good and bad come in such cycles. Sometimes the good you know, kicked into motion by the bad and vice versa. I think of all the good intentions that issued in terrible results, Christian missions not being the least of them. So at any rate, I, I, I would love to see some of the binaries be um, defeated <laughs> imaginatively, if not really. What does the unconscious mind have to do with the transforming, the trans transforming of your mind and growth? And what ro role does imagination play in that, that process of mm. growth and transformation? Mm. Thomas Berry, who uh, was a, an eco-theologian in the Christian tradition, and uh, he so much loved the, the earth and, and believed in the sacredness of the earth that he preferred sometimes, instead of calling himself a theologian, he preferred to call himself a geologian. Um, but uh, Thomas, one of the things Thomas Berry says about the universe, he says it's so amazing that it must have been dreamt into being. Uh, and then he goes on to say, and we are in such a mess. Uh, ecologically, internationally, between us as religions, in so many of our uh, communities. We're in such a mess, he says, 
that we need to dream the way forward. That is, we need to allow ourselves to uh, imagine um, ways of seeing and ways of relating that we've known nothing about yet. So that unconscious d dimension within us, to put it uh, in theological terms, uh, to be made of God or to be made in the image and likeness of God, is to have been made in the image of the great imaginer, the great dreamer, the one who is forever uh, seeing in new ways and bringing uh, new expressions of life into being in the universe. And uh, so often we get, we get quite sort of fixed within the torments and fragmentations and uh, struggles that we're part of. And I love uh, what the, the Dalai Lama says when he's asked if he has hope for the future. Uh, the first thing he does, of course, is to laugh. And uh, laughter is part of the gift that he brings. Uh, trying to get outside of ourselves, trying not to see ourselves so seriously, that, that in part is what his laughter is about. But then after laughing, he will say, of course I have hope for the future. He says, the future has not yet been decided. And so often we live as if the future has already been decided, as if the fragmentations and divisions that we are part of are somehow a fixed and indelible uh, marking on life. And uh, it's accessing the imagination or accessing this unconscious dimension within us. Uh, this is a realm where, where we can access some new ways of seeing that we know nothing about yet. Uh, I think a lot of our Western Christian inheritance has wanted to say that everything of ultimate value has already been said, it's already been defined, and we've got it all packaged, and uh, either agree or get out. Um, instead of seeing that truth is like this living well, and it's trying to throw up new ways of seeing, new ways of relating that, that, uh, that we know nothing of yet, or that we're just on the verge of, we're glimpsing new ways in which we might relate as nations and relate as religions and relate as species. Uh, and uh, let's, let's open ourselves to the imagination and let's do it the way children do it. Let's play with our imagination because sometimes it's playing with ways of seeing, playing with, with new ways of expression that can lead us uh, into a type of discovery of what we haven't known. So uh, the gift of the imagination for me is, is one of, the, one of the, the sort of deep and sacred aspects of what it is to be made in the image of God.